Crafty Corner. Uh, welcome back to my channel for another episode of Coffee, Crime, and Crafts. It has been a minute. Um, I took some time off from doing any sort of YouTube videos and uh, about a month and a half ago I did upload a new floss tube video and now it's time I guess with fall setting in for me to get back to doing some Coffee, Crime, and Craft videos as well. Um, typically, uh, these are bi-weekly episodes where I discuss the details of a specific crime um, or an interesting story while I'm working on a weekly craft project. So today, I am going to be working on the Winchester Mystery House. This is a chart that was designed by Debbie Patrick. And she designed a lot of um, architectural charts. Her ability to design um, houses, like to chart them for cross-stitch, is amazing. Um, her use of the different tones to create shading, her use of backstitching, which there is a ton of. I mean, the detail is just superb. I have been really enjoying working on this and I've been, I guess, monogamously working on this for the last month or so um, in an effort to try and get this done by Halloween this year. I want it done by the 30th, uh, 30th, 31st of October. So we're going to work on this today. Um, I'm going to stitch some of the plain stitching uh, that's in here because uh, it's easy to do. It's easy to concentrate on while I'm trying to relay a story. And without further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to take a look at world-renowned English crime and mystery novelist Agatha Christie. In 1926, she actually became the leading character in her very own real-life mystery. In December of that year, she disappeared under very mysterious circumstances, prompting a police investigation and a search for her that lasted 11 days. Okay, so I think I have this set up properly where I want it. Um, this is the section I'm going to be working on here, and I'm using uh, DMC, oh, that's not the right color, that's 3012, I need 3052, hang on, here we go, this is the right color. So today I've got a dark roast coffee there, I'm actually getting ready, I have to work night shift again tonight. And we are going to just get some stitching done and chat. I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada, um, in case anyone's interested or wants to know what I'm doing it on. It's 18 count uh, white Ada. I'm just going to change my lamp here so we can get some good lighting. There we go. Oops, and I just struck the camera, which I've got mounted above my head. <laughs> So, go ahead, grab your snack or your drink of choice and your craft, and let's get started. We're going to begin with a little bit of background information. Um, Agatha Mary Clarissa Miller. She was born on September the 15th, uh, 1890 into a wealthy, um, upper middle class family in Torquay. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I could be wrong. Um, Devon in England. 
She was the youngest of three children, born to Frederick and Clarissa Margaret Miller. As a female child of a well-to-do family, Agatha grew up uh, mostly homeschooled. However, in 1902, following her father's death, she did begin attending Mrs. Geyer's Girls' School. She had some difficulty adjusting to the disciplined atmosphere at the school. So her mother then decided to send her to Paris to a series of boarding schools um, that were focusing on voice and piano training. Agatha, however, lacked the um, temperament that many felt was required to be a concert pianist or opera singer. So she gave up on those ambitions to return home to England to her mother, whose health had started to take a turn. It was here in England that she began uh, writing as a young adult, but she was unsuccessful early on. She had six rejections, but that all changed, however, in 1920, when she penned the novel, The Mysterious Affair at Styles, which featured her now famous detective, Hercule Poirot, which I absolutely love those books. I've read several of them now. So during both world wars, Okay. During both world wars, Agatha served her country by working in hospital dispensaries. Um, it was here that she developed much of her um, extensive knowledge of poisons that featured prominently later on in many of her novels, as well as her short stories and plays. Oh, that, that one's already crossed. Let's go this way. In total, she's known for, I believe it's 66 detective novels, 14 short story collections, and she also wrote um, six additional novels under the pen name Mary uh, Westmacott. To date, Agatha Christie holds the Guinness World Record uh, for the best-selling fiction writer of all time, having sold more than 2 billion copies worldwide. So what occurred that led to Agatha going missing in 1926? Well, in 1912, she met and was courted by Archibald Christie, who was known as uh, Archie. And he was a Royal Artillery officer with the Air Force. In August of 1914, he was sent to France to fight during the outbreak of World War I. It was during the uh, return trip home that he and Agatha got married on Christmas Eve, 1914. By 1918, Archie had left the Air Force and he and Agatha moved to London. She settled into married life and they had a child together, a daughter named Rosalind. She was born in August of 1919. So Agatha's writing career had started to take off by this time. And her and Archie were reaping the benefits of her novels and were also invited by um, Ernest Belcher 
to participate in an around the world tour to promote the British Empire whoops, in 1922. So the Christie's decided that uh, it would be a good opportunity and they left their young daughter in the care of Agatha's mother and sister and they traveled the world for 10 months. Upon returning home, Agatha and Archie decided to stop living in an apartment and purchased a home in Sunningdale, Berkshire, which they named Styles, after the home in Agatha's first Hercule Poirot novel. By 1926, Agatha's mother's health had deteriorated a great deal. She was excessively close to her mother, and when she passed in April of that year, um, Agatha slipped into a very deep depression. There were several reports that began floating around <clears throat> in August of 1926 that Agatha had gone away to a small village near uh, Beritz, I think it's called, to rest and recover. From a breakdown she had due to overwork, but the more likely scenario was that the um, breakdown was caused by the combination of her mother's death um, and her depression. And it was at this point that she also learned of her husband's infidelity. Uh, it was in August that Archie had approached Agatha to discuss getting a divorce. He admitted that he had fallen for a young woman uh, a 25-year-old named Nancy Neal, who was working in his office and who he had actually met through Major Ernest Belcher. So on <clears throat> several months later, um, they didn't get divorced, and several months later, um, on December 3rd of 1926, Agatha and Archie got into a terrible argument. He told Agatha of his plan to go away that weekend with friends, um, unaccompanied by his wife, and that he planned to take his mistress instead. Archie left their home, and it was this point that Agatha also left later that evening. She left her daughter in the care of their housekeeper. It wasn't until the next day, December 4th, that it was discovered that Agatha had gone missing. She did not return to Stiles, and her car a Morris Cowley, was found in the morning by the Surrey police. It had been abandoned at Newlands Corner, parked along the top of a chalk quarry, partially obscured in the bushes with the headlights still on. It appeared as though uh, the car had ended up there following an accident. Agatha's expired driver's license her coat, and a suitcase containing her clothes uh, were all found inside the vehicle, but there was no sign of her. So this incident kicked off a manhunt and an investigation into her disappearance that lasted a total of 11 days. Agatha was 36 years old at the time, and had already published several novels, so her disappearance quickly became the hottest news story. It even made the front page of the news of the New York Times. The Home Secretary, William Joyson Hicks, pressured police to solve the disappearance and locate Agatha. 
The police had more than 1,000 officers working the case, along with 15,000 volunteers and several airplanes searching the landscape for any clues. And a local newspaper offered a 100 pound reward for information. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the Sherlock Holmes series, he also got involved and took one of Agatha's gloves to a spirit medium. Oops, I'm down the wrong hole there. Get this back out. Rethread my needle. So it's just odd to me that, uh, you know, back in the day, I guess, um, sort of believing in spiritualism and spirit mediums and that sort of thing, um, it was thought that, you know, maybe that was an actual thing that could lend help. And um, I just find it interesting that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle got involved and that's how he chose to help, was to take a piece of her clothing, a glove, to a spirit medium. Um, so her husband, Archie, along with his mistress, Nancy, um, at the time of Agatha's disappearance, they also fell under suspicion as they had supposedly been together out of town when Agatha had disappeared. So by December the 8th, 1926, five days after Agatha's disappearance, the police called off the search. They received information that her brother-in-law had gotten a letter from Agatha saying that she was going to a spa in Yorkshire for rest and treatment. So this information would not be confirmed, however, and Agatha was still not located. So by December 10th, the police again picked up the search and expanded their hunt. Now I'm going to end this thread because I've gotten to the bitter end of it. I'll just weave this underneath the back here. Under a few stitches. And snip that off. I know I'm out of frame there now. It's just while I'm doing that. Didn't want to accidentally hit the camera while I was flipping the piece over there. Now I'll just rethread my needle. So yeah, up to this point, very interesting that, you know, she's been missing for five days. Um, they decide at that point that they've kind of exhausted efforts because they did find out from her brother-in-law supposedly or they heard that he had received a letter from her um, but the contents of that letter uh, weren't confirmed so she was not located at any spa in Yorkshire alrighty so because that wasn't confirmed, um, by December 10th, the police again picked up the search and expanded their hunt. And they brought one of um, Agatha's own dogs to the location where her car had been found to see if the dog would be able to track its owner's scent. It didn't. Um, it didn't help at all. They then decided that her disappearance must have been a suicide. 
with the breakdown of her marriage and the proximity of um, her car being abandoned next to the cliff at the quarry, they thought that maybe she had um, taken her own life. The lake, which was called the Silent Pool, was also dredged just in case she had jumped um, or she had met with foul play. But again, despite the efforts and the extensive manhunt, she was still not located. On December the 14th, 1926, um, 10 days after the initial report to the police that she had been um, missing, but 11 days since she had been seen by anybody, the uh, head waiter at the Hydropathic Hotel in Harrogate, Yorkshire, contacted the police. He reported to police that they had um, a very lively and outgoing guest that had been staying with them from South Africa, um, going by the name of Teresa Neal. And she had been staying with them and he thought that she might actually be the missing writer. So the police were skeptical as the hotel was um, 296 kilometers north of her home in Sunningdale. And she had, after all, abandoned her vehicle the night that she disappeared. So they had, you know, during their search, they had no, I guess, viable information that she had traveled out of the area So the hotel employee um, had called them and he said that this female had actually checked into the hotel using that uh, name, Teresa Neal. And earlier I mentioned that Neal is the surname of her husband's mistress. So... Archie traveled with the police to Yorkshire and they decided to go to the hotel. I just have to check my chart here for a minute. Okay. Uh, they decided to go to the hotel and see if they could identify this lady in hopes that she would still be there by the time they arrived. So Archie, um, when he shows up the next uh, day there, he goes and takes a seat in the restaurant. And he's there in the hotel's dining room waiting for this mysterious Ms. Neal to walk in and take her seat at her usual table where she would uh, had been taking her meals during the course of her stay. And sure enough, in walked Agatha. Um, she sat down in the dining room and she began reading a newspaper, which oddly enough, actually had her own disappearance on the front page. When she was approached by Archie, witnesses there stated that she appeared to be genuinely puzzled and that she had little recognition of him. The following day, um, the 15th of December, Agatha left the hotel and went to her sister's residence at Abney Hall in Cheadle. And while she was there, she was sequestered. They kept the gates locked. They didn't respond to telephone callers. Um, 
anyone who was trying to inquire about her whereabouts um, or what had indeed happened to her were turned away. There were no concrete reasons ever given for Agatha's disappearance. However, two doctors did diagnose her with suffering from an unquestionable, genuine loss of memory. And several opinions were offered up as to what had occurred. One biographer, Janet Morgan, wrote that she believed Agatha disappeared during a fugue state, which is a temporary disassociative state um, where a person has memory loss or other symptoms of amnesia and ends up in an unexpected place. I don't know if you remember, but a while ago I did a story on a missing skier who had gone missing and he was missing for like a couple of days and he was found like all the way on the other side of the country, had no recollection ha ha how he had gotten there, um, you know, just walked away from the ski resort and was found um, like in California wearing, you know, uh, ski gear and, and, and carrying goggles or something like that. I can't remember the exact details, but it was believed that he had suffered from the same sort of um, disassociative state uh, because he had no recollection. He had like amnesia for um, those few days that he was missing. Um, people in a fugue state often can't remember who they are or the details about their past. Another author, Jared Cole, uh, believes that she actually planned the entire event as a way to embarrass her husband, but did not anticipate the resulting public drama that occurred. Laura Thompson, another biographer, believes that Christy appeared, uh, disappeared during another nervous breakdown and that she was aware of her actions, but that she wasn't in um, any sort of emotional control uh, over herself. So the public's perception at the time was largely negative. Um, supposing um, a publicity stunt had gone wrong or that she had made a failed attempt to frame her husband for her murder. Um, Archie, however, declared his wife to be um, suffering from amnesia and a possible concussion resulting from the accident the night that she disappeared. And I think he used the word accident because of the way her vehicle was found partially in the bushes at the top of the quarry. It was almost like she had partially gone off the road. So following her stay with her sister, Agatha sailed to Las Palmas in the Canary Islands to complete her convalescence uh, in January of 1927. She didn't return to England until three months later. It was at that time that she finally petitioned her husband for a divorce. And it was um, granted, or she was, granted a decree nisi, uh, which basically means a provisional decree of divorce against her husband. And in April of 1928, uh, that decree was then made absolute. Um, sorry, she was uh, given the decree Nisi in April of 1928, but it was made absolute in October of that year. So she then went on um, with her life Arthur continued on with his. He actually married his mistress, Nancy Neal, uh, one week after their divorce was finalized. Agatha, ret Agatha retained custody of their daughter, Rosalind, and she retained her surname, Christy, for writing purposes. She left England and took the Orient Express to Istanbul, 
and she continued on to Baghdad. Uh, while in Iraq, she met and became friends with an archaeologist named Leonard Woolley and his wife. And she was invited by them to return uh, to their dig in February of 1930. Oh, now I've got a little knot. You hate it when that happens? Okay, I'm just going to fix that one second. Okay. I think we're back there. So she retained custody. She went on this trip to Istanbul, <clears throat> went on to Baghdad. She met this archaeologist. Um, and he and his wife invited her to return with them to their dig in February of 1930. It was during that trip that she met another archaeologist named Max Mallowan. And although he was 13 years her junior, uh, they began a relationship and they married later that year in September. Uh, Agatha and Max remained married until her death in 1976. So for such a well-known author of crime and mystery novels, I can't believe I never heard this story before of her disappearance until now. Um, I thought it was quite interesting and intriguing. Um, again, hard to formulate a conclusion as to what exactly happened and why she disappeared. But the fact that she was missing for 11 days before she was located, um, yeah, it's just a odd little story in Agatha's life. So I'm coming to the end of my thread and we are coming to the end of this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, I certainly enjoyed reading up on the subject and putting the dialogue together. And if you do appreciate my content and the time it takes to research and uh, present these cases in a respectful and decent manner, please um, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel um, so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. I'll uh, do my best going forward now to continue to upload videos um, every second week. I already have a couple other videos that are um, researched and the dialogue's been written and completed. And um, I'll also do my regular floss tube videos um, at least once a month to keep you all updated on what I've been up to in my crafting if you'd like to support my channel in the time it takes to prepare these episodes, feel free to check out the Buy Me a Coffee link in the description box below, because as you know, a coffee is always appreciated. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy your crafting. Um.